Welcome back to Mrs. Ogram's Maths. And today we're going to look at finding intersections using your graphics calculator. So the videos I've done previously have mostly been using Desmos and I've referred occasionally to uh, the possibility of using your graphics calculator instead. Um, it's a little more clunky, but it is possible. So if you're in an exam situation where you don't have access to Desmos, you can use the Casio graphics calculator instead. Okay, so the example that we're going to use here is um, set up over here on the left hand side. So we've got these two equations, um, this left hand one, the 151, and then the one on the right, the, the 100 one. So we've had some sort of situation that led to these two equations. We need to find out when this one, the 151, is less than this 100 one, and also the 151 is less than 130. So on your graphics calculator, go to the graphing menu. And we're going to put those functions in. So for y1, we want 150 sine of 2 pi over 2. And then we've got x minus 3 and a plus 220. So that's how you enter that. I'm just going to pause the video and enter the other ones. So on the screen now, you can see we've got the 150 sine equation is entered as equation y1. The 100 cos1 is entered as equation y2. And the line to make the 130 to help us see that cutoff point is entered as y3. Now we go to press F6 to draw that function. Now I deliberately reset the calculator to give you an idea of what might happen. As we've pressed draw, nothing comes up. This means that we're not looking in the right place of the graph in our view window. So here on V window, we're going to change the parameters of the window that we're looking at. So the X minimum is going to be starting at zero. The maximum we can consider from the three and the two here. So if this one's got a period of two and that one's got a period of three, then together they will sync up again at six. So we need to go to at least six to see um, where the full repeat happens. So I'm going to put a maximum of six there. And then the Y minimum, that can go zero. The maximum needs to go to the highest point that either of our two graphs could be. Now, the highest point on the left hand side, this is looking like it's going to be our biggest graph. The 220 gives us the middle line and then it can go 150 above that. So we need to go to at least 370. So I'm going to put 400 on here just to round that off. OK, now let's draw that and we've got all of the graphs. So these markers on here, they're marking every one year. That was also in the view window. If you need to change that, it's here on scale. So I'm I've got that scale in there as one. OK, so we've got every one year marked on the X axis and then we've got our three equations. Now we want to find out when Y1 is lower than Y2 and also lower than Y3 to be able to satisfy those conditions. So we use our G solve and we can look for those intersection points. So we're looking at if this right here is our Y1 function. We know that's the y1 function because um, that's the, the the tallest stretch of them and it's got the biggest number at the front. So that's our sine function. We want to know when it drops below the other function, this one here, and also is below this line of 300. So the first time that happens is just right here. Now that is an intersection point between the two curves that we've got. So we go to this menu here that was under G solve of F5 um, and we select the intersection um, option, which is also on F5. Now we need to tell it which of those three equations to pick to find those intersection points. So we needed to do it with two curves. So we've got that equation is in there for Y1 and we also need it for Y2. So enter and it will give us that first intersection point. So we've got The first time that that happens, where the, that curve drops below both of those things, is at 0.23. So it happens between 0.23 and we need to see when it comes back up. 
So when it comes back up, it's going to be this one here where it hits the line. So now we need the intersection points of that curve and that line. So we're just using this up and down buttons here to select the, the other equation we want. So we want the, the 130 line. We don't want that first point because that wasn't below um, uh, both being below both of them. We want to move along and find the next one. So when it comes back up to that line is 0 0.795. Okay, now we need to have a skim through and find if there's any other places where it happens. So we're moving along this bigger curve. Uh, here it drops below the other curve, but it's not below the both of them until this point here. So again, we're doing the curve and the line intersection point to get to this one. So I'm going to scroll through until it gets me to that one. There we go. So the next time it happens is between 4.2 and, and then it's going to stop happening just here. Now that little one there, it's when it comes back up over the other curve. So again, we've got to switch to looking for the intersection of the two curves. So I've got one curve selected and now the second curve selected and move along until it gives us that point that we wanted just there. So that's at 4.77. Um, and remember, we've looked in a view of uh, there being six years there. I'm just going to go back to that there. So that's as many as we'll need to find. Anything to the right of the screen will simply be another repeat of this picture here. So we can say, and these intervals repeat every six years. And what I just realized as I finished writing that was we weren't actually told anything about the context of this problem. I've done it as if it was measured in years. It could just as easily have been measured in months or hours or something. Uh, but just make sure that your sentences at the end when you're answering that question are given in the context of the question. And there you have it. That's how to um, use your graphics calculator to find those intervals when you've got three uh, equations on your screen.